all the earth shall bow before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We are for the Mass for the soul of Sebastian Pillai. We pray that God will grant him a peaceful repose. We pray for comfort and strength for the family. My dear brothers and sisters, in the presence of the Lord, let us acknowledge and admit our failings and our weakness and ask him for his pardon and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. On the way back, as David was returning after killing the Philistine, the women came out to meet Saul from all the towns of Israel, singing and dancing to the sound of tambourine and lyre and cries of joy. And as they danced, the women sang. Saul has killed his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. Saul was very angry. The incident was not to his liking. They have given David the tens of thousands, he said, but me, only the thousands. He has all but the kingship now. And Saul turned a jealous eye on David from that day forward. Saul told Jonathan, his son, and all his servants of his intention to kill David. Now Jonathan, Saul's son, held David in great affection. And so Jonathan warned David, My father Saul is looking for a way to kill you, he said. So be on your guard tomorrow morning. Hide away in some secret place. Then I will go and keep my father company in the fields where you are hiding and will talk to my father about you. I will find out what the situation is and let you know. So Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul, his father. He said, Let not the king sin against his servant David, for he has not sinned against you, and what he has done has been greatly to your advantage. He took his life in his hands when he killed the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great victory for all Israel. You saw it yourself and rejoiced. Why then sin against innocent blood in killing David without cause? Saul was impressed by Jonathan's words and took on an oath. As the Lord lives, I will not kill him. Jonathan called David and told him all these things. Then Jonathan brought him to Saul, and David attended on him as before. The word of the Lord. In God I trust, I shall not fear. In God I trust, I shall not fear. Have mercy on me, God. Men crush me. They fight me all day long and oppress me. My foes crush me all the day long, for many fight proudly against me. In God I trust, I shall not fear. 
You have kept an account of my wanderings. You have kept a record of my tears. Are they not written in your book? Then my foes will be put to flight on the day I call to you. This I know that God is on my side. In God whose word I praise. In the Lord whose word I praise. In God I trust. I shall not fear. What can mortal man do to me? I am bound by the vows I have made you. O oh God, I will offer you praise, for you rescued my soul from death. You kept my feet from stumbling, that I may walk in the presence of God, in the light of the living. Let us stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. spirit Lord and they are life you have the message of eternal life The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus withdrew with all his disciples to the lakeside, and great crowds from Galilee followed him. From Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, Transjordania, and the region of Tyre and Sidon, great numbers who had heard of all he was doing, came to him. And he asked his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, to keep him from being crushed. For he had cured so many that all who were afflicted in any way were crowding forward to touch him. And the unclean spirit, whenever they saw him, would fall down before him and shout, You are the Son of God. But he warned them strongly not to make him known. Beloved in Christ, the Gospel of the Lord. Amen. The first reading today continues what happened yesterday when David had defeated Goliath and he returns triumphantly to his own place, to his own country, to his own native town, and he's met with a reaction. One reaction is positive, the other is negative. All the women in the city meet David to acclaim him, to sing praises to him, to acknowledge what he has done, and to encourage him to continue his mission and the work he has done for his people and for himself. So these people, these women, see in David something good. They praise what is positive. They motivate people. They may not have done that good thing, but they acknowledge the goodness in other people and the success of other people. On the other hand, Saul the king does not see this as something good for him because of his own selfishness, ego, and, as the scripture says, jealousy. For him, David is a young person. Why are the women praising him? Why are they hailing him? And why are they giving him more praises than himself? And so what does he do? He plans to kill David. He plans to destroy David. But of course, it is revealed to him by his own son that this man has not done anything evil. So why sin in the sight of God? My dear brothers and sisters, this lists me and I sort to reflect 
on the act of jealousy, envy, and seeking to kill the spirit, the talent, the gift of other people. We may experience this in our daily lives. We may experience this in our community. We may even experience it in our church. Sometimes we feel threatened by the success of people, by the gift of people. We may not literally want to kill them, but we can kill their spirit, their desire, their motivation to do the good. We do this sometimes by belittling people so that we will raise ourselves up. We do that by sometimes speaking ill of other people in order to sound the good person. We do this by also not acknowledging how far we ourselves have been and how our situation is. If Saul had come to his consciousness and self-knowledge, that he's come to a point that he cannot do certain things as he used to do, he wouldn't have had that jealousy and rage. So two things to do here. We must know ourselves, know our limits, our shortcomings, and our strength. And if you come to this self-knowledge, will not be envious and jealous about other people seeking to run them down. The second is that we need to acknowledge that God uses other people in different ways, in different means, in order to see the one purpose and cause of humanity. This morning, let us all reflect on this. How have my actions belittled other people? How have my words run down the spirit of other people? Do I also acknowledge my own strength and weakness and acknowledge the goodness that God does in me as well as God does in other people? May the Lord grant us that grace that we may do away with anything that is evil and like the evil spirit that Jesus says, be quiet, be silent. Let's not the evil spirit move us to do such things as jealousy and envy. May the Lord help us all. May he strengthen us. May he grant us the grace that we will always motivate people, that we will always acknowledge the success of people and not to be found in that pit of jealousy, envy, and anger. May he bless us all. Amen. Let us now stand and pray that God will grant us the grace to do his will at all times. We pray in thanksgiving to God for the gift of our lives, for his goodness and for his blessings, and for the fact that we live today to hear his word and to participate in the Eucharist. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray to God thanking the people in our lives, thanking God for giving us all people, people around us. Let us thank God for his goodness in them and pray that God will continue to lift them up. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for all who are sick, especially those who have asked for our prayers, those who would have loved to come to church but are unable to because of ill health, that God will heal them. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for those who celebrate their birthdays today, especially for Ariane, that God will grant him good health and more years to experience the goodness of God. And we pray for the missionaries of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for all who have asked for our prayers and pray for our own needs and intentions. And that you may overcome jealousy, envy, and anger, 
Let us ask the Blessed Virgin Mary to help us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are there amongst you, men, and blessed is the fruits of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Merciful and gracious God, come to our aid and grant us the grace to overcome every evil. Come to our aid and strengthen us. Come to our aid and lift us up, so that our prayers and needs which have placed before you this morning may be acceptable in your sight. We ask all of these through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruits of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruits of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God the Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we hear this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With trust and confidence in God, let us say the words our Lord Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And with a bow, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take your Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this solid sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, 
come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever.
He has prepared a table before me. And how precious is the chalice that quenches my thirst. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, Amen. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and to serve God. Have a blessed day. May I remind you all about tomorrow's meeting for the over 40s in the school hall. If you are able to, please do from 5 to 6.30. Thank you very much.